Hi, I'm Wayne Jones from Wayne Jones Audio. Let me show you around this space. Now, basically to show you what alternative setups you could have. This setup is 7.1.4, seven of the single 110s. The point one is the sub down here. The point four are the ceiling speakers, the smallest, six and a half inch ones. For consistency of tweeter level and what's coming out your ear all at the same ear level, I've chosen in this setup to use seven of the 110 speakers. So the tweeter level is all the same, all the way around. Uh, the translation is awesome in any model, so that doesn't matter. Now, there are two more other alternatives. Behind me here uh, are the three-way 210 configuration, which are 2,000 watts each. Each model, the smaller model, uh, has the same characteristics in sound, frequency, transients, everything. To this one, it just gets more of it and then more of it again with the big ones. So you can mix and match if you wish. So the other alternative setup is to have three of these 210 three ways across the front. Uh, simply, the tweeter height is higher here. So with Sound ID reference, it wouldn't matter that much if you use the combination of two for left and right and one of these in the center. I have that at home. Now the other alternative for smaller situations, smaller rooms, um, it's quite simple and it would be to have the six and a half inch babies, I call them, um, all round for your seven speakers. Uh, and then the sub, that's just a perfect small setup. You get the same uh, translation, the exact same specifications of frequency and transients. So that's your choice. So it's mix and match for your situation. So the beauty of this setup is they're so consistent all the way around when you're mixing and want to place things. You might already know I partnered with uh, Sonoworks Sound ID Reference uh, to enable you guys to do your room calibration and upload it to the speakers so you no longer need it in your door. Sonoworks are in thousands, hundreds of thousands of studios around the world and such a, a great tool for us to calibrate our rooms in every situation from bedroom studios to major uh, professional studios. Now, they've come out with a multi-channel uh, capability now. We've enabled uh, the capability of uploading the whole thing to the speakers with delay and gain compensation. An example is, okay, you measure your room with a multi-channel app. It will tell you the calibration needed for your, your EQ profile, but also give you the delay and gain uh, adjustments you need to make. Now, with my system, you can export that whole thing and import it into the speakers, including the delay, including the gain. I'm going to demonstrate this by introducing you to a longtime friend and colleague, Danny Bonici, who has written an incredible track um, specifically for this setup. And he's very good at what he does. So come with me, enjoy. So I'll let Danny have a bit of a chat about the speakers and his mix and what he, what he does, what he looks for. Yeah, so Wayne came to me a couple of months ago showed me his monitors to begin with. And I ended up getting a set of those, and um, <clears throat> which I really loved. And I was just mixing uh, all, you know, everything from then on, on those monitors. And then um, Wayne, a couple of months after that, was saying, oh, listen, I'm gonna set up a Dolby Atmos system. Have you mixed in Dolby Atmos? And I'm like, no, I haven't, I haven't mixed any Dolby Atmos yet. And he goes, oh, you wanna try and get this together? And, so yeah, one thing led to another, and before you you know it, I um I was writing and producing a track specifically to I guess um, demonstrate his system that he's got going here. I exported the file and gave it to Wayne, the ADM file, and he pulled it up on Pro Tools, so uh, he was able to just get it all up and running, and so we could check the mix in this room. And it's really it, it's really. Uh, reignited my passion for mixing, I'll be honest, because it's it's a whole new thing. Like, and there's so many new things you can do and you don't have to cram everything into a 2.0 anymore. With this track, for instance, you know, it was nice to be able to send, you know, percussion up into the roof 
a little bit and, and, and reverbs, you know, that surround you. Being able to listen to it on these speakers in this room was, was, was an eye opener. So yeah. The fact that you can move so many things around the whole space um, and you don't have to basically, you know, fit it into these, this small space anymore just opens you up to, to so many possibilities. For me, the most exciting thing, being a producer myself, was now I look at things differently, like when I'm writing, like yeah. it's just like, oh, maybe I'll write that part because I know it's going to do a certain thing in the Atmos system or in binaural or however I'm mixing it. It's been like a super fast learning curve. I was like, and very steep. I've put in a lot of hours and I've really enjoyed the whole process start to finish and getting it to this room and, you know, and hearing seeing the results and everything and seeing it work has really been a rewarding experience. Well, I wish you'd demonstrate some tracks and what, um, what you actually did and where you placed some stuff maybe. Yeah. So I, I, I did it all in Logic to begin with. Um, <clears throat> there's a Dolby Atmos renderers built in, so that was a bonus. Though when I gave it to, to Wayne, I did export the ADM file and, and um, so he could just play it on his system at home, make sure everything was good before we came to this room and set up and, you know, make sure everything was working correctly. So the fact that you can still tweak that file is, is pretty cool. That means people can can mix binaurally anywhere and then come to a beautiful system like this and and really check their mixes to see if they're translating in an Atmos environment. So I'm just gonna show you here a little bit of what I'm doing and um, how I'm placing some objects around around the room. So I've just soloed uh, a shaker and a bit further down here, uh, a vocal um, coming into the breakdown of the track. So if you have a look at the renderer, you'll be able to see that I've put the shakers up in the top part up here and then you can see these other balls moving around. That's the vocal panning around all the speakers around. So that's, that's basically the renderer showing you exactly what's going on in the arrangement. So just showing you here on the mixer window what's actually happening. There's a, there's a music bed here and that's basically looking after the surround sound element, which is the seven speakers. So uh, a lot of elements obviously come through on the bed there. And the rest, of the, tr the rest of the track, if I just scroll across here, you'll see these are all coming out of objects. So objects can be placed. Uh, the metadata basically allows me to place the objects um, in, in, in positions and not in an actual speaker. So um, that I use the, obviously the panner to do that and that gets saved into the file. So another thing that I, that I did in this mix was send a bunch of reverbs um, to different aux channels and basically had those reverbs in different positions. Some reverb returns coming out of the side channels, some coming out of the rear top, so they were objects. Um, and I think maybe I did the front as well um, at the top. So I was able to spread all the reverb returns around and so it gave, gave me more of an immersive feel when an object, even though it was coming out of the front speaker, it kind of filled the room a little bit, well, you know, when I added a bit of reverb to it. So that was one kind of technique that I used to help with the immersion of sound. Um, there's lots of other little tricks, but it's all quite new to me as well. So the more I do, I guess the more I'm gonna work out and, and on where to put things and how I'd like to hear things. And I guess I guess the most important thing is too is how it's going to translate once it's once it goes from 7-1 down to binaural. And, and that's the that's the battle you have as an engineer to make sure that it translates well. So so doing this mix uh, on these monitors after they've been um, sound ID'd, if you like, the multi-channel, uh, you can really hear where everything is coming from and you can really pinpoint your mixes and get them sounding exactly how you want. And I think um, that's a great advantage that that partnership has between Wayne and Sound ID. So, so having, that, um, having uh, that kind of precision really helps uh, you nail your mixes. And it's really helped me on my journey. And I, I think you know, it's something that could definitely help others on their journey in the, the Dolby Atmos world. So it's a, it's a learning curve for all of us, whether you're artist, producer, engineer, uh, master, 
doing mastering, it's uh, it won't take that long, but we got used to stereo from mono, so it's, <laughs> it's here to stay. Yeah. So thanks, Dan. Yeah, no, oh, mate, thank you for getting me involved in this whole process and and really opening me up to some, you know, some new uh, technology and it's been fantastic. It's been a great journey. Yeah, my pleasure.